in this uh, we people have taken up uh, i myself is technologically handicapped i term it across for everybody i it's a it's a you know submission from my side i'm not that good at uh, online uh, thing i think and all uh, and it is very tough to organize webinars creating links sending sending it across to the globe and entering the people to do it keeping away those uh, anecdotes and all so but i think uh, himanshu you have done a great job of uh, organizing calling in good uh, resource people pulling in them for this wonderful uh, uh, seminars i i was seeing at the topics which has been done so far and coming up all good people doing good job with good topics so when you asked me what should be talked to i felt i think uh, this uh, topic will be of an apt uh, thing let me just give the background of why i have taken this as a topic <clears throat> which is close to my heart uh, it's been almost now uh, uh, i am touching the silver jubilee of my uh, experience in this field of physiotherapy and uh, famer fellowship uh, which i have done from manipal has uh, taken me a step uh, high up in the field of education as an educationalist academy of health profession education is one such forum where across the globe not alone physios uh, uh, doctors mainly it is started by the medical faculty and now it is across interprofessional uh, people are joining like engineers are there in that chartered accountants are there architects are there in that where uh, we share our knowledge across and try to learn about each other with each other you know where there is good amount of interprofessionalism which exists so i felt uh, this will be a, a good choice where such people are sitting over here and uh, partaking part in the webinars majority are uh, academicians and uh, you can't shun away the teaching part of it because though you are uh, not a teacher or an academician but when you are with a patient uh, i am sure you will be educating them you are talking to them you are going to communicate with them about your problems and you are going to educate them about the exercises so this part of uh, a, this area of talking to the talking to others is something educating others is a teacher's job a clinician does that a researcher does does that and an academician does that so professionalism is and uh, before we uh, talked about this uh, topic uh, himanshu was asking me sir can this be done live across uh, if there is some problem in this uh, thing i told him that this professionalism is a talk which can be attended attended by anybody it is not uh, related to only physiotherapy if you have seen in my slides i have not written anywhere physiotherapy the way to excellence in physiotherapy no this topic can fix a chef who is a hotelier this topic can uh, fix into an engineering uh, guy so this professionalism many of those senior people who are there in this forum can understand uh, that what did what does it mean but to many budding physios Uh, students or those who are in the beginning of the career probably this topic may be an eye opener for many how to uh, use this terminology in the right sense and how to exhibit that professionalism in our uh, life in the total life so uh, with this uh, initial understanding of what it is let me go into the topic the way to excellence how can you excel yourself if you are a physiotherapist how can you be a excellent physiotherapist if you are a hotelier how can you be a best hotelier if you are an engineer how can you be the best engineer so it's it's just as all about so i'll be taking you through the slides it's very uh, simple to understand but each word which is written over here carries some weightage so i humbly request everybody to just be on that word understand the importance of that word and get the right sense of it i'll be sharing a story which is so close to my heart which i try to share it as many places as i can in either maybe a conference or a classroom teaching or a orientation program to my ugbgs so this is something close to my heart i can't stop say sharing that story whenever professionalism topic comes in my mind so uh, be ready for the story too which is just not a story it is a real happening which happened in uh, way back in uh, 1970s to 2010 which will be coming in the slide okay with this i uh, let me just jump into the topic what is professionalism <clears throat> uh if anybody has any uh, question that you have when i move through the slides please put it in the chat box i'll try to look at it at the last 10 minutes we can discuss each questions or you can whatsapp me or you can uh, give the question to himanshu he will be sharing it with me i can come back to you maybe if not today tomorrow any time i'll be happy to share that so what is professionalism <clears throat> you have it is written over here very clearly it has to do with the way a person conducts himself or herself in the workplace so we are talking about workplace professionalism i am limiting into professionalism in workplace 
the professionalism should be there across not only in the workplace it is at home also it is in the playground it is uh, wherever you are but since we as professionals i am restricting to the workplace it is how a person conduct himself it is just not to do with only the degrees that those who are this is nothing to do with the uh, uh, the qualification it is the basic etiquette a person should have how you conduct himself i am in a common platform now i am talking to many people whom i could not able to see through the screen because of limitation of the screen so but i need to conduct myself i should not use any abusive language i should not use any abusive gestures i should not use uh, unwanted uh, words while speaking so that is something conducting myself i should be very careful in using looking at it even when you are looking at somebody your eyes should speak the right thing when you are walking across your walk your style of walk should mean something good the words that you speak every activity that ever you do even if you are silent also the face that you uh, you know uh, uh, you know you telecast yourself in front of others should speak something good conducting himself is professionalism that's a simple way of understanding those people who are interested in knowing more about professionalism <clears throat> there is a book called as be professional written by subrato bagichi who is a very good uh, writer many of you who are all orator readers can uh, would have heard about his name subrato bagichi he has written uh, this work this book i have taken few from uh, his book only it's a very interesting book which will deal about lot of uh, things about professionalism why do we talk about professionalism at this juncture is the slide moving himanshu yeah okay fine sir yes sir moving thumbs up moving yeah so why professionalism why, do, why are we talking about this see the slide i have written 1 million deaths due to surgical complications worldwide so there are more than almost a million deaths are happening and more than a lakh people die due to medical negligence and 5.2 million medical injuries in india can we really afford not to are we are we supposed to allow such things which is man made evils all these problems which is quoted over here in the slide is a man made evil which could have been avoided which can be prevented why this had happened it may many may say that it was just by a mistake a blunder but if you are a true professional who try to conduct yourself you could have avoided this so already deaths are happening across which is inevitable but these negligence due to that deaths we can't afford to there are many people who are left handicapped who are disabled just because somewhere something went wrong which could have been prevented that is why this professionalism is very very important because uh, the whole world is now in hue and cry no one worries about when so many number of trees are cut no many worries when birds are die due to this uh, you know kite flying but when people die due to corona i think the whole world has come to a standstill every government is talking about when it comes to human beings we are more sensitive so professionalism is this is a quality is a conduct which a human being only can understand and do it but to be very honest you can see even the dogs do professionally they know whom to talk to whom to bark to where to sit how to look at it you know when those uh, five uh, you know senses animal can do that we should have much more we have to be much more sensitive to understand it so professionalism is very very essential at this point of time <clears throat> i have put uh, put over here maslow's uh, uh, hierarchy of needs i would like to just uh, take few minutes talking about this needs versus wants needs are something which is very much essential and you all must be aware want is something desired which can we can live without that too for example water is a need food is a want but to some extent it is a need when you when you want jalebi and when you want uh, uh, mysore pak it is a, it's a desire when you want food just for to satiate your uh, hunger pangs it is a need so when the basic thing even the animal does is working for self if you see the lower quadrant you know we have to grow up like the highest one is on the top and the lowest one is the basic need physiological needs which is breathing food water shelter clothing and sleep which is self it is more towards me matlab said is my own i am i am limiting myself to myself and and again the safety and security we why do we work if the people say that i am work because i have to take care of my family i work because i have to generate more property i work because i want social stability and my security of my future life again it is limited to yourself me my family which is the lowest level of maslow hierarchy of needs when you move up to that next one love and belonging like this is friendship family intimacy 
sense of connection, like I'm connecting to across the, see this webinar is in something beyond self. Why this inculcators, inculcators group is organizing? Because they wanted to share the knowledge where people from across the globe come and talk about it. This is working for others. And self-esteem, more than food and money and dress and other things, I want to gain respect from others. I need to be an unique individual. I am myself is an unique individual which is different from others. That's self-esteem, which is for working for others. But the true professional, those who are beyond self, they realize through service and reflection. It means like they will be having certain qualities like integrity, honesty, you know, uh, this commitment, meaning for life, being more spiritual. So when you talk about all these self-actualization, this Maslow hierarchical theory talks about that, which is realizing self through service and reflection. So a true professional climb up ladder from physiological needs to self-esteem to self-actualization. So the first basic step, if you want to be a true professional, to adopt professionalism, you have to move, you have to expand your circle from me to others to whole society, global. I am, we are part of this huge cosmos. I'm a macrocos, microcosm of that macrocosm. So we are trying to connect yourself with the whole society is something which is highly needed. You have to see for the best of everything. It is just not alone me, my family, my friends, but the whole globe, the society should survive. So that is more important, which is something basic minimum requirement to be a true professional and uh, to exhibit more professionalism. Next is, who is a professional? So here I have quoted down few points, if you see in the slide, which is <clears throat> very important, completion of work without supervision. You can ask yourself, how many of us, why should you, we, let us ask ourselves, how many of us complete the work without supervision? By saying this, what I mean is, my teacher has given a task, which has to be submitted by five o'clock tomorrow evening. And I have to submit it. So how many of you people are having that fear because teacher have told, I have to do it. It is not that I, by doing this, I learn something more. I'm going to give the best. So a person who is a professional will complete the task without even others telling, without even others supervising. Next is certification of quality of work. Completing is something, but completing to the best is something good. Like I will try to give the best. Sharing the knowledge is just like that by talking is one thing, but where you put your heart and soul into it and bring the best out of it is quality of work and you are satisfying yourself. First, you should be satisfied that I have given my best. When you have the satisfaction, others will definitely do that. And next is managers increasing volumes. That is competency and efficiency. Work pressure. I'm getting, I'm treating five patients a day and in down the line in another 20 days or a month, I'm getting 10 patients and as it goes, I'm treating 50 patients. So, but others, it's not that five patients mean I'll do the quality work and 50 patients means my quality goes and as the quantity increases, quality decreases. That is inversely proportional. Professional is unprofessional. Professionalism is whatever the number increases, the quality doesn't go down. I spend the same amount of time that I spend with my first patient to the 50th patient. I give the best that what I give to my first patient, I give it to the 50th patient. Same is the case in teaching. So you try it as the volume increases. I have heard many people sir, bahut zyada patient tha na, isliye mera thoda chut gaya tha, maine feedback nahi liya, maine assessment form fill up nahi kar paya, but our, I didn't communicate with the patient that lacks professionalism. There should be no excuse at all in that. You have to manage it. That is, so professionalism is not inborn. Even they say that the leaders are not born, they are made. No one is born Narendra Modi or born uh, Trump or whosoever it is, you know. We have to create ourselves. We have the power to create ourselves to be good leaders and we have the power to become ourselves true professional. So you have to develop this competency. Another is manages complexity. Uh, again, it is talking about competence and effectiveness. Complexity means that you, you handle a patient with osteoarthritis. That is one thing. You handle a patient with osteoarthritis along with the sciatica and then with some tibial fracture example, let's say. It's a complex condition. But you try to manage it again properly. That's how this interprofessionalism comes into role. Whatever that you can do, you should do. But you should know the strength of others. Okay, one of my friends who is an orthotist, he makes very good brace for this. Let me contact him and rope him in. 
and i have a very good uh, mechanical engineer or a biomedical engineer who can create a good uh, uh, knee cap where that instantaneous axis of rotation can be planned in such a way that the joint move easily i rope in biomedical engineer i have a very good uh, uh, you know pain specialist whom i can call him to reduce the pain like you try to identify the strength of other people bringing in those people into it establishing a team work through which ultimately the patient is in the center it is patient centric and all the other people it's an example for clinical situation same is the case for teaching situation you have a student is your stakeholder for the student to get the best it is not that every time you only can give the best you should identify the others who can give the best like attending these such seminars allowing them to go to the conference allowing them to make some do some research work at the undergraduate level itself or sending them to other places to learn many things so these are all the way how you adapt team mechanism through which you identify yourself as a team player so these are all those people who adapt all those things are all true professionals here i have a story which is very very interesting this is the in fact if i share this story and if the time is over by 5 o'clock but if you understand the story there ends the topic of professionalism furthermore is also not needed i have quoted over here uh, uh, right uh, from where it is available in times of india this article was published it is a, it is just not a story which was written by somebody it is a true happening and uh, it i always share it with my students and my faculty over here are aware about this because it's one of the inspiring stories to uh, to share here our institute uh, is almost you know it is a true uh, example of exhibiting professionalism may be a medical college or a physiotherapy or a nursing college or for that matter any departments in the hospital professionalism is the core value of our institute so this story holds very uh, important uh, value in each of us each of our lives and i take this opportunity to share this story among the audience how many whosoever it is there and uh, i want you to understand them and uh, try to imagine the situation as a unveil the story jaise jaise main story bataunga you try to imagine the situation create a picture in your brain so that you understand what the story is all about it is all about a guy called as mahadeva this uh, 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 had happened and in the real life in a, in a place in mysore district karnataka <clears throat> it's a small hamlet it's a small village where this boy belong to this uh, it happened in 19 and uh, this boy that time was a uh, uh, school uh, it is a boy of around 11 to 15 years old and uh, he survived with his mother that time no father for this boy okay and this boy used to be with his mother in a small village and uh, the livelihood was like that the mother used to go to visit the houses in that village unka jo roz ka kapda dona hai bartan dona hai no they she does all those household chores of the each family out of which whatever the money is given she used to buy food and everything for this boy so they two survived with this uh, minimal amount of money that sh- that mother used to get out of this household activity that she does in the village it happened so that one day one fine morning this mother fell sick bimar ho gayi thi and uh, the nearby people villagers they admitted her in a nearby small uh, primary health center it's a small uh, phc like hospital which be basic facilities she was admitted over there and this boy ultimately have to move to the hospital and this mother was getting treated over there with all those uh, whatever the facilities available with drips with the injections whatever and the villagers to some extent supported with whatever the money has to be spent and this boy used to play in the corridor of the wards play with the visitors over their fellow patients and he was just growing there uh, uh, in the hospital only because no nobody else was there in the family and uh, and he used to see next to the hospital there was a cremation ground jo bhi dead bodies hota hai a old man uh, used to uh, uh, get those dead bodies and he used to cremate uh, religiously and uh, does that job and this boy used to go there be with that old man and help him out come back to the hospital play there in the corridor and the fellow patients and he was not worried about uh, the mother what is happening because he is too small to understand what had happened to the mother and it happened so that one day the mother also died and this boy was orphaned nobody was there in his uh, in his life and he was just left alone but this boy this mother's death didn't affect him much because he was not knowing what had happened what is death what had happened because you know he used to daily see in the cremation ground people are getting buried and it happened so that uh, her mother was buried in the same cremation and he did that job of uh, doing the cremation of his mother dead body and the villagers uh, took sympathy of this boy and they called this boy let's go back home 
uh, this is time now uh, you are how, what will you do in the hospital uh, you come back to the village we will help you out up jo bhi madad karna you just do the small thing whatever the your mother did you do all those small small things we will give you food three times and you live there but you know to all of their surprise this boy said no i am not going to come to the village i am staying back in the hospital with this old man jo dada tha the next uh, the cremator uh, graveyard mein that old man i am going to live with this man and these people were surprised and they were asking why are you going to be in this graveyard eh to dead bodies mare hua logon ko yahan par chala dete hain aap yahan par kya kar rahe ho aap idhar nahi hai just come back home we will, we will take you to the village you are too small to see all these things we will support you come <clears throat> but this boy was very uh, stubborn and he was clear in his ideas he said so i thank you all of you for taking care of me you please proceed i am going to be here and he stayed back with this old man right so then what happened is that um, these village people after they went back and this boy was with this old man trying to assist him in all those activities and uh, he was doing all the uh, cremation and all and uh, that happened and he was growing with him almost it went for 5 years 10 years and this boy has become a youth now by that time it was in uh, early 90s and all uh, so and uh, this old man also died one day and uh, this this cremation ground is something uh, very peculiar because all these unclaimed bodies maybe that happened due to railway track accidents road traffic accidents or any unclaimed bodies you know this was the man uh, uh, who when buried that sivarajan who was uh, the man behind the killing of uh, rajiv gandhi the then prime minister he did his cremation also which was there in the newspaper too so all these unclaimed bodies or any secret things whatever the government they used to so this boy used to get 100 150 200 rupees or 250 rupees for each body cremation either by the police officials or by the local philan whatever the money and it was uh, sufficient for him to do his daily livelihood so he used to receive all those so wherever any unclaimed dead bodies were there immediately call mahadeva he used to go there carry that body in his uh, three wheeler bullock bullock cart type uske upar leke aane ka hai and what he that the best part was he didn't do this job it was a who will like to do this uh, dead body job just imagine this boy didn't take up the task as a, a very unwanted task but he started loving that task he used to bring the dead body clean the dead body isko nehlana hai then he used to put garland uh, on, on on the body he used to do diya and agarbatti and everything and with prayers he used to bury it or burn it as per the need so he was doing the task very diligently completely with all sincerity and gradually local people supported him to buy a horse tonga uh, he had a horse uh, uh, ride on on which uh, the tonga connected he used to bring all the sometime he used to carry four five dead bodies at a time uh, because of the accidents and he used to but still uh, he never made make any face for that uh, uh, thing sometimes the bodies will be coming with all blood over there or sometime after five six days they would have identify the dead body they used to call mahadevan he used to get will be stinking like anything but he never felt bad about it he carried those bodies washed it thoroughly and then he did all the task so diligently and uh, in fact uh, i read recently that this man is still alive he survived with the four two daughters and two sons and his son has been graduated and he is uh, supporting him in all these activities and uh, somehow he never uh, you know uh, got any a uh, sort of wrong uh, deed in his throughout his career it has been almost 20 25 years this man is into this task of uh, burying the dead body and uh, you know what he has got lot of gold medals awards and the chief minister of uh, karnataka one called him on the stage and felicitated him with uh, a certificate of award gold medal everything and service award for his wonderful uh, service that he has done so the story ends over here but the lesson learned this this his story has been quoted in the subruto bagiji's book of the professional where the previous slide what i told you can relate his ta task to this all these things he used to complete his work without supervision he was not employed by someone nobody used to come and check him whether he has washed the body whether he has cleaned it properly garland kiya puja kiya properly bari kiya nobody used to come and supervise him but till date he has almost in his account he has almost did this cremation job for almost 72000 dead bodies he has done can you imagine this mahadeva in his lifetime till now has almost done 72000 dead bodies cremation and burial and each one is unique to him he never did the 72nd thousand one in a very careless way no the same first dead body what he did was same with the 
that is certification of quality of work he didn't he did his work complete his task without any supervision he certified his own he was not certified you did a good job he didn't he was not waiting for the governor to felicitate him governor felicitated him after 20 years of his service but he certified himself that is first time he assisted that old man then gradually he introduced garlanding on his own then he nehlana hai ye bhi khud ki unhone kiya and diya jalana hai agarbatti jalana hai jo bhi bhagwan ko prarthana karna all these things are all cultivated by him he improved his quality of work and again this increasing volumes 72000 he has done which we are not have and even that much amount of patience in our career so far now but that that lowest level of job of undertaker that is the uh, graveyard caretaker he has done with complete efficiency and the full competence so that is why this story attracts me a lot and i take it always and it is a real happening you can google it and you can read much more about him it is there in the internet also this man is a true exemplary example of how a professional should be and what is professionalism so the take home message is ends over here though there are few more slides coming up if we could understand what it is and this is more than enough for uh, anything which a true professional should adapt you complete your task don't wait for others to supervise you you certify your quality of work that i have given the best to my patient i have given the best to my students and you manage your volume of work with full competency and efficiency and manage the complexity with full effectiveness this is the take home message for this whole one hour of talk i am giving it in the fifth slide itself there are 25 20 slides more to go but here is the crux of our topic right <clears throat> now what is that we expect out of a professional one is efficiency another is effectiveness what is efficiency getting the thing right but means that you you as a head of the institute or as a principal of an institute or a hod of a clinic or a big hospital you know you will be having multiple tasks you will be doing multitasking but you have to get the thing right you may be getting lot of complexity some unsolved problems will be there suddenly somebody will resign and go or somebody will do a medical exigence but how are you going to get the thing right a skill that can be tested and measured and it relates to manual labor that is efficiency i am efficient enough to handle the things right that is efficiency effectiveness is it's a habit getting the right thing done because there are lot ways lot ways to do the wrong things you know but we have to do only the right thing done i know this is the right job so it is a habit and it is related to the knowledge worker not manual labor so you have to be effective and you have to be efficient this is least expected out of a professional so let us try to be more efficient and effective in the coming years of our career what is not professionalism we have been talking about professionalism what is not professionalism discussing confidential matters in public because you know you your patient would have come to you he or she would have shared something very confidential for which she has uh, sought your advice maybe it can be related to any of her physical illness or mental illness and you are supposed to maintain utmost confidentiality there are some people who just like that do loose talks discussing confidential matters in pub public is true unprofessionalism and favoritism that's another problem many of the teachers faculty or for that matter whosoever I, you know they they get carried away with favoritism he or she is my favorite student let me give more internal marks that is true unprofessionalism let me uh, let me not ask more uh, less questions to her so that he or she can get good marks no whether they are close to you they may be living in your own house they may be neighbor to you or they may be from a vip class but no favoritism if you do it it is unprofessional taking advantage of superior position i am the boss i can do anything let me issue a memo to somebody or let me try to suppress someone so that i can show my power that is true unprofessionalism and not helping those who seek help these are some minimal most important at, uh, attributes which should not be possessed i have written it over here there are so many things which are there in the literatures not helping is very much unprofessional someone comes and ask you sir can i have a, a book of this or can I, i want to know how you treat this i want to know how you teach this you should be free to share your things because kya bolte hain gyan baantne se badhta hai when you share your knowledge you are going to increase your own knowledge and uh, and you are going to increase your fellow be you know you are going to support your own fellow people what will happen if my fellow physio Uh, starts my starts a clinic in front of me and uh, become a competitor. No worries, your patients are yours, your stakeholders are always yours. The more you give, if you get more. That is the nature. Nature always gives you more. When you try to give more, nature will give you more. When you don't give, nature won't give you. So try to be more generous in everything. 
whether it be food or knowledge, whatever it is. So these four qualities are not supposed to be in us as a true professional. So remember, we follow rules. We have, we are all bound by rules. Maybe uh, you know at home or on the road or in your clinic or in your hospital or in your academic area of institute. We have rules, certain rules and regulations. We have to adhere to that rule. We have to follow that. There is no second thing because nowadays in the present scenario, rule makers are the rule breakers. But let us not be. Let us follow the rules. But second point is more important. When no rules, I'm sorry for the mistake of remember I have written N, it is M. Uh, when no rules, use fair judgment. It doesn't mean that it is for granted that you can do whatever you want. But you have to use fair judgment. What fair judgment? I'm putting it in the few last lines. I'll come back to it. But when you are in doubt, doubt hand, because always we say benefit of doubt should be given to students. Benefit of doubt should be given to patients. That's for, the, for others. But when you have a doubt, do not do what suits us, but ask. Uh, there is no rule, but I don't know whether I can uh, do the, uh, take up this decision. Ask your seniors, ask your friends, or ask those people who have framed it, those who are there, who are already working in, that, in their environment. So when in doubt, do not do what suits us, ask. Next most important about the fair judgment, I have put it over here. It is related to spirituality also. When you are faced with dilemma, you have to do a task. You have been told to do, do it. Tomorrow I am going to do it. Before you do it, this is something which I do daily. I think I should share it so that you can, it is my own writing. Ask whether this act of yours will harm others. Is it going to affect others? If the answer is going to say yes, merely benefit milega, but please don't do it. Avoid doing it. But if your answer to that question is no, you ask again, it's not that you have to do this act of yours will harm you. So perform if it benefit others, else no. So in, in the underlying thing is that you should do only if it is going to benefit others. You should not keep it for yourself first. You, you next. Others first. Then it comes you. So this is something very important that you are trying for the overall benefit of the globe, the nature, the cosm, the cosmos, everything. Right? So this is something very important that we need to remember as a true professional. As I told you, this can fix it to a physiotherapist or to anybody else, even for a father, even for, a, if, for my child. If I have to buy a bicycle to my child, I should ask myself. Whether this boy has so everywhere you can apply this question to yourself in your day-to-day -day life also so that you get a clear picture because it is always said that your true concerns will guide you always even the chore jo chori karta hai unko bhi pata hota that he is doing wrong it is not it's not that somebody has to come and tell him that jo aap chori karte ho galat hai batane ki zarurat nahi every individual whosoever is doing something wrong knows that he is doing wrong people say mere se galti se ho gaya unintentionally ho gaya no it cannot be accepted the true constraints will tell you that this is something wrong. But the problem is when the people are doing mistake again and again, upon which again, again and again, that true constraints So whenever the constraints come up and say conscious that you are wrong, but we don't hear it because we have been tuned to doing wrong things. So better be sensitized to all these things before those wrong things come on us. So that is something very important to be a true professional. Next, professional qualities. What are that each physio, each academician, each clinician should possess? It is about, there are two things of time, body and soul and doing more by doing less. Let's talk about it. I'll take a few seconds for this. Managing time. Time is very important. Today also that, you know, four o'clock we have to start means I was happy that uh, Himanshu was there at 3.45 checking everything and everything went on. And that's very important. A true professional will abide by that time until unless some pressurizing situation on him or her, because I'm going to give some last few slides about time management, where sometimes even a true professional have to skip the time. That's an exceptional case. But by and large, we should try to manage time. That is self-discipline and managing health. Without health, you can't do anything. You are, I am here. I could able to speak because of which I could able to attend this webinar. I could able to see, I could able to hear. If there is some problem in this, if health is not there, nothing is there. So that's why we say in those days, you know, health is wealth. We don't want money. We want health. So you should have adequate sleep, adequate exercise. You should be relaxing. Relaxation is also equally important. I have seen people who are professionals, but they work for 18 hours. 
that's not true professionalism you have to give time to yourself and you have to have relaxation in the form of any sports activities or in the form of meditation or in the form of something whatever is best suits you and eating properly healthy food and managing self you can adopt these sort of you know indian uh, scriptures talk about yoga and meditation which i strongly agree to it and i i urge each one of us to practice such part somewhere or other way some asanas or some meditation which is very very essential which will help us to keep our consciousness and our concerns much more sensitive and doing more by doing less which i like the most doing more by doing less by kam karne se hum bada sa de sakte hain for that you should have prioritization priority there may be five six work come together at one point of time you need to know which is you have to number it 1 2 3 4 5 the one which comes in the first is not always the first sometime the unimportant task come first and uh, the most important part, uh, task will come at the fifth number so you have to rearrange the number take the fifth to first and put the first to back you should be having that knowledge intelligence enough to handle the things energize by doing something new you have to take up challenge so this situation itself online teaching we were not mastered i i guess many of us have not been into online teaching but now you know creating a webinar id using microsoft tools whatever we have cisco webex zoom so many tools are never ends that's why I, that is another saying which i always like when you are a teacher you are a learner you have to keep yourself abreast of the latest knowledge keep yourself hooked on to the latest happenings mentoring and grooming that's another thing you have to be a mentor so more than a teacher try to be a facilitator try to be a mentor mentor is a person who not alone takes care of the academic activities even as a clinician you can be a mentor to your uh, patient i have many of my patients who used to come for my back pain or neck pain later on they come and talk about their uh, uh, you know uh, some problems in their day to day life they they discuss about their career opportunities for their son and daughter which i which i was not supposed to but there there is some amount of uh, you know uh, bondage that happens between you and the patient they take you as your mentor and we try to mentor them for their personal needs also and grooming which is very essential and bridging the knowledge gap as i told you try to keep yourself updated with what is happening we cannot say that for example this technology though i am not that good at it but i cannot take it as an excuse that i am not good at online teaching so let me not talk to webinars no then when will i learn myself here there is something which is lacking so you have to try to explore and learn something new and try to have the knowledge gap bridged and uh, next is commitment to commitment this is very important you are committing to something and commit to that commitment do what you have said you would do in the time you have committed if you are committed that this sunday at 5 o'clock i am going to do this task see to that let the whole world go against you but you are supposed to do that so commitment is one of the most important attribute quality behavior which a professional should need commit give your commitment to it and when you are committing to it you should do it and next is welcoming feedback that's another important thing the problem with uh, many people is that we are scared to get negative comments from people sir aapki padhai acha nahi hua or your way of expression was not right don't have any fear to learn uh, all these you know to get all these feedback that's not a problem you have to welcome it because those people who are carrying you only can come and give you the negative part of what it is positive part to har koi de dega that is okay that is to encourage that is to motivate you and to keep yourself feel more happy but negative feedbacks are very very important so that you try to change that and try to bring a best out of you so you have to be a true professional will not be worried about what others say even if it is to trap you or to put you down or so the true professional will know this feedback of this particular individual is going to benefit me he will take it if it is just to trap me or to insult me he will just they say nikal ke chhod dene ka even upar mitti gira to usko nikal dene ka simple so the true professional knows which one to take it which one not to take next is doing something for yourself so beware of professional decay that's what that's what i was trying to say because physiotherapy has grown in leaps and bounds what what we studied in the uh, way back in 1980s 90s are not there now it is changing change is the only word which is always changing so we, it, it may happen so that if you are not keeping yourself updated you may be lacking behind survival of the fittest and survival of the fastest you have to cope up yourself it's a mad rat race everybody is now moving fast you have to keep up yourself to that pace next is being proactive have self confidence care for others well being and welfare as i told you it is very very important work for others the physiological needs you have to move from me to others others to the whole universe not worried about extra work <clears throat> a true professional will not feel that because you know some people will 
say why only me this work comes to me only the, the head of the department calls me only to give it you should understand that only that tree gets stones which is having lot of fruits jisme jis ped mein phal nahi hai to uske upar patthar nahi fekte hain you know so that, that means that only those people who are qualified who have that knowledge who have that uh, etiquette only will get good work those people who are not getting any work they should understand that they are not needed by the department it means without them also the department can survive so you are losing your importance many people may say that i am not given any task so i am happy sitting over there so it is not the mistake of the head of the department or the seniors but it is you have to show your presence always you have to take up so this true professional will not be worried he will be taking extra work and being the first to act that's more important you know everybody remembers you know three idiot story who was the first person to land in uh, uh, moon everybody knows it is neil armstrong who is the second one no one remembers so always the first person is always remembered so let us be the the, the true professional try to be the first to act again it is to act diligently i am thinking on behalf of others in the previous slide itself i have told you ask before you do some task is it going to harm others if yes no so thinking on behalf of others is very very essential i am 50% completed so we are on pace another 15 20 minutes uh, uh, is it fine himanshu we have time no to go further uh, we have sufficient time so there is no issue of time thank you thank you thank you i hope people are with me if yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody wants to say something you can put it in the chat box you can uh, whatsapp no problem <clears throat> so next is professional qualities courtesy and humility you know especially in when in because courtesy we see amongst beggars on in the lower class people if you see even the ghar pe jo kaam wale aate hain wo excuse karke aate hain but those who are in the power no they take it for granted they don't even take permission from you to enter your room but the best part is those true professional or those in spite of being in the power they have the least courtesy and humility to smile at you wish you good morning ask about your uh, self how are you doing well or not so that's least courtesy and humility they should possess so and always these true professional keep human being first and foremost means not the money not anything else it is the person which is very important so that's more important then they are more responsible and accountable in the sense the responsibility is one thing because i am given like for example himanshu is the host of this webinar he is responsible for it that's by virtue of getting the power you are responsible the problem comes with accountability accountability is something many people miss it like for example he uh, i i take him as an example over here okay, himanshu with uh, freedom though since you are there accountability is he asked me before sir if something goes wrong during the seminar when the i i he is accountable that he don't want his uh, listeners not to miss so he what he said i i'll put it on live stream so i am taking accountability it i can i can uh, suit uh, i can give an example of a movie you know the hero always take the responsibility when the movie hits but when the movie is not a box, a box of it hit the hero says it is the director who has not made a good film but the director becomes the accountable person so a true professional has to be responsible and accountable also when it goes right everybody will be with you that's not a problem but when something goes wrong because of your decision you have decided that to uh, create a, some new uh, curriculum in your uh, syllabus or you are planning to do something introduce something new in the clinical area agar wo acha chala to everybody will praise you but if it that had brought some bad things nobody will take accountable but the leader will take the accountability so professionalism is a precursor to leadership a true professional can only can become a true leader so that's why i said leaders are not born they are made to become a leader you have to be a true professional how to be a true professional these are all certain hints so it is very straight forward direct answers those who want to be a true professional just follow these guidelines and i i can guarantee you 100% success you can be a true professional next is self awareness knowing who you are so remain rooted so the more wherever you are flying higher but your feet should be grounded i know that 25 years before i was just a budding physio earning only 700000 rupees per month now i am earning in lakhs doesn't mean that i am something big i have i just born early because of that i have i become a principal early it is not that you are younger to me means you are lower to me another 5 years down the line you are going to be a principal of an institute you are going to be a big boss so but so you have to understand the background of what you are what it is how you have grown up there always remain rooted and do not believe in myth about yourself myth can be a good one or a bad one you have to be aware of it you should know your strength you should not wait for the people to come and tell you you are this or you are that another is being authentic 
that's more important what you we call it in you no know, in sanskrit trikarna shuddhi that is thoughts words and deeds what do you what i think i speak what i speak i do that's more important these three things but the problem in this age is i think something in my mind but i speak something and do something so that loses authenticity so authenticity comes from the right thinking itself the moment you think about it that should be authentic so that you whatever you speak is authentic and whatever you do is authentic then you will have followers like how amitabh bachan says jahan se wo khada hota hai wahan se line shuru hota hai so when you stand people follow you so that leadership will come only when you are authentic you should have that you know power of authenticity and being comfortable comfortable is another important thing you should be approachable i can use another term that you are comfortable at your zone and you are easily approachable so that others can come to you and talk to you there are many people who are very good very knowledgeable i'm not saying good like i'm taking back my word they are highly intelligent knowledgeable but you cannot approach them then what is the use of having that knowledge or intelligence you have to be approachable that's another important thing next is looking beyond money money is not everything money is a by product whether it is uh, uh, treating a patient or uh, whether it is uh, doing some activity for for which you are doing it for money money comes it is a by product but the most important is that you should have that activity sense of satisfaction self worth peer recognition like others recognize you people should know you as long as you are there you know that people should know you i know this man who has been doing service for this profession giving back to profession because whatever i am i was just hari har prakash when i was born but now i am known to the world because of my profession people know me himanshu knows me i know him because of the profession i know uh, harshraj ji because of the profession otherwise where is he where i am so people are all across but we know each other because of the profession so it is time for us to give back to the profession without any expectation money is completely the last thing which has to come in dealing with sense of empty emptiness in the sense i am least bothered i tomorrow is not in my hands today is my day let me do it tomorrow if there is there god is there god give me life i'll be getting up again and do another day next is not yielding to temptation not suffering false attractions that's more important people we do people do lot of things for money people do lot of things for name fame certificates that is all secondary don't get attracted to those things your satisfaction should uh, should be there when people get you exactly what you are trying to my talk will end and i'll be satisfied if, if, if people one or two people take what exactly i do and practice it in their life that's worth more than money right that's more important so how to be if i talked about efficiency and effectiveness being effective efficient that's more important a leader will always do to do list like today morning morning as you enter into your office into your into your chamber in the clinic you have to have a to do list a to do list is that i have to do this activity 1 2 3 4 that's more important you should know your whole day curriculum program what am i supposed to do for this whole day there are who, people will come and sit over there i don't know what to do whatever comes let me do that's not true professional you should know 10 to 11 is my task 11 to 12 is this task 12 to 1 is this task that's very very essential so that you are not missing the important things in your to do list nahi bana to kai bar urgent task karke aapko to do list nahi hai to important task gayab ho jata hai next is saying no you should be able to say you have to be stubborn you have to be assertive jahan par no hai to no the problem with me is also many times i find difficult to say no because of which i get stuck better to say no so that you don't suffer and you give the best to it so i have to develop that habit and i am developing it i am doing it saying no is also very important white space is a space which you have to give your for yourself that time for myself be prepared that's another thing that the thing is that you give your best but be prepared for the worst like let's say for example this one this webinar i am sure that the, there will be electricity the the where the slides will move on i am okay with that but what will happen if electricity goes away or if the slides doesn't move i cannot be i should be prepared for the worst so that i can still speak so the true leader a true professional will have always backup plan plan a and plan b if plan i have this plan a to do if something goes wrong i always have the plan b so that i will resort to it that's very essential it, it it will be fixing you to whatever the activity that you do you can just uh, imagine any activity and see how will i i have to go to i have to catch this bus to reach that place if this bus didn't come i should have plan b either to walk to use a shortcut or to call my friend to take, give lift and drop me over there or some other alternate mode of or something else you should have plan b ask pertinent question that is called as rca root cause analysis most of the time we as leaders professionals we deal with people we forget the problem ye banda theek nahi hai ye kaam nahi karta hai 
but we should know why it is not the person it is what is the task which is not being done why the task which is not being done why this person comes last when you talk about beneficiaries it is the human being first when you talk about issues you have to talk about the problem first that's more important so root cause analysis will help us it's like how uh, pain is just a symptom if you are trying to always treat the pain you will be temporarily treating the patient but after 3 days after 5 days after 15 days after 1 month he'll come back to you because you have not done a root cause analysis why the pain is there is some underlying tumor over here or some impingement present over there in the shoulder or some old fracture until unless you are not treating the cause the problem will come again and again same over here you should identify what the problem is why this is not working for me that's very important that will make you more efficient and then intent listening it's another most important thing because what happens is leaders you know and for that matter teachers we keep on talking we will never bother whether the other person understands or not but we should understand that god has given two ears so that he can speak more one mouth so that he can speak less you know you have to be a good listener to be a good leader samne wala kya bol raha situation kya listening is not alone through your ears you have to listen through your mind and heart also you have to be always vigilant what is happening around me that's very important to be a good professional and a leader next is the time which i talked about what is that know thy time doing more things faster is no substitute for doing the right things it's self explanatory doing more things faster <clears throat> jaldi jaldi kaam karne is not a substitute for doing the right things because the problem is too much of work you do 10 activity it doesn't mean that all the 10 activities are correct maybe it may be out of that eight activities may be wrong so knowing the time is very essential first things first as i told you urgent and important i'm going to show it in the next slide anything less than a conscious commitment to the important is an unconscious commitment to the unimportant you should identify which is important which is urgent we have to do that how to concentrate how to know that we can do many things but can do only one thing at a time that's more important i am capable of teaching i am a patient of signing thing but right now i am in a webinar i can do many things but i i cannot do multiple things right now you have to understand that we are human beings with one sense though you are you can do multitasking but the effectiveness goes away if you are not focusing on that only one thing at a time concentration required precisely because because there are so many tasks to be done so you have to be focused so many difficult thing people who get nothing done often work much harder but they expect that everything will go right that's the problem the person who doesn't do properly will expect more when you can do only one thing at a time you have to do the first thing first so the first thing is that you should get the first thing yeah that is why the to do list helps us out what is that first thing that i have to do today followed by second third fourth priorities and posteriorities we have to prioritize the best part which is god has given to each one of us is all of us god is god is not having any favoritism he is not doing any i know he is a true professional i always feel that because he has given equal time to each one of us narendra modi ji also gets 24 hours i am getting 24 hours himanshu gets 24 hours even the beggar on the street get 24 hours for that matter any any species on the earth 24 hours why the other person is successful why i am not successful there lies the crux of understanding the priorities and task has to be adjusted everybody has got available time is 24 hours but that 24 hours how i am going to effectively manage is true professionalism so for that you have to prioritize your task and posteriorize which is which should come first followed by what which can which can be done a week later you should not do it right now which should be done right now should not be postponed many failures happen because you don't prioritize it and that causes pressure later on probably that leads to your mental ill health physical ill health and so many people quit their life because they are not successful the problem is not you are not a problem you didn't understand the time that is given to us and understand the pressures and how to delegate the task that is another important so each one of us has got 24 hours so we should be satisfied and happy nobody is given extra resource time is the best resource that god has given to all of us it is up to the individual to gather the uh, other qualifications other skills it is all within the same 24 hours you are going to do it deciding again what you postpone this is more important what you postpone you abandon the more you postpone it i'll do it after a week i'll do it after 10 days means one or the other day you are going to abandon it you are not going to do it you are that means that that job is gone out of your hand 
So if it is, it is risky as well, what you postpone, maybe someone else triumph. That's more important. For example, if I didn't, it's just an example. If webinar, if I didn't say yes to Himanshu, somebody else would be talking this topic. Because people are there in queue, line. You have to understand that it may happen so that the task which you have decided not to do, somebody may do and they may win over you. So, so you should not have fear that I should always take up what it is. But you have the priorities and posteriorities. If you're going to abandon a task, see the pros and cons. By not doing this, am I going to lose something? And for a better cause, if you're going to lose something, it's okay. For some simple comfort area, I have to get up early morning, 5 o'clock to do this activity. I don't want to do it. And if you have the capacity to get up at 5 o'clock to do it, you should do it. You should not leave it because somebody else will get up at 5 o'clock and can take over the task. So better, don't postpone. If you postpone, you may abandon. If you're going to abandon the task, ask before it whether it is going to be someone else triumph. So grab it. Grab the opportunity. That's very important. So rules for priority, how, how can you do that? Priority, KSM set karenge. pick the future as against the past. So past is past, you know what had happened. So pick the, pick the future, what I have missed in the past. So now I should not miss it. Focus on opportunity rather than problems. This is an opportunity, try to attract. I wanted to talk about professionalism to many people. So this is an opportunity for me because many people who I don't know also, they are there in this platform through which I can share my knowledge of what is professionalism. So I should grab this opportunity to approach as many people as I can. Choose your own direction rather than climb on the bandwagon. You should be focused. I want to travel on this direction. I, I should be a good academician. Students, especially if they are there in the platform, please set a goal for yourself. Right now, are you, are you want to become a clinician, researcher, academician, administrator, manager, you know, entrepreneur, choose it, fix a direction and work on that. Aim high. Laddu hai to laddu sochna bundi nahi sochne ka. Sochne mein kya jata hai? Think big. Aim high. Aim for something that will make a difference rather than for something that is safe and easy to do. Many people who are not achievers try to play safe. You should have least courage to take risk. That's more important. When I was, uh, uh, I was, I, I'm born in Pondicherry. I'm a Tamilian. I was not having any language of Hindi, anything when I was just out of my postgraduate studies. And I was called for a job in Punjab. And it was actually a major risk in my life because I've never been into my, away from my family. In fact, uh, I humbly say that I missed my MBBA. I don't, I didn't join my MBBA seat just because I got it in Kerala. I joined physiotherapy because it was in Pondicherry, same place. I didn't go out of my, that much Reserve and I was a home guy, but I had to take the risk of going to Punjab. If I have missed that risk, I would not have been a dean of Baba Farid University of Health Sciences. I would not have achieved so much thing if I have not taken that uh, risk of going to Punjab. And now I'm in Gujarat, learning Gujarati. I learned Punjabi, I learned Hindi. So uh, what I mean to say is just as an example with all humbleness, there is no pride or ego in this. I mean to say that take a minimal risk that you can. After all, it is in India and it is another language. And they are all fellow beings, so Sikh people, Punjabis are all after all India. Let me take a risk. People go out of countries, they go out of the, you know, uh, you know, they go to Mars and Moon. I'm not going to that place. It is just after all the same place in the same country. So take the minimal risk. Who knows that will take you to the heights. So you should not worry. You should not be always trying to be more safe and easy. You have to take a challenge. So these professionals, leaders take challenges. So this is the paradox which I wanted to say. Urgent versus important. Failures, unprofessionals always work on this zone. Urgent. Professionals, leaders work, which is very important. So this urgent is always time. You are looking at the time, which will be missing many things. Important, you will be direction. You get the direction. This is more important. I'm going to fly on this direction. So which is whichever is directive is that important, which is more time bound is urgent. So we have to be very clear. Many of us fall prey to this urgent zone. Be careful with that. So this is how the SCOVE time management matrix, which is there in the, it's, it's a good matrix. People can, anybody who wants to practice in their future life to know about what is it, you can try on that. Urgent and important, urgent and not important, not important and urgent, not important and not urgent. So we have, this is, if you're working on this zone, you are managing. This is, this is, you are somewhat managing, but this is more important. This is focusing. You are, though it is not urgent, but it is important. But it is not important and if you are working urgent, means you have to avoid this zoom. Kaam zaruri hai, but important nahi hai. Many of us get stuck over here. And completely please avoid this. 
बिकॉज इट इज नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट एंड नॉट अर्जेंट इफ यू सी आई ओवर ए जंक मेल चेक करना है व्हाट्सएप चेक करते रहने का है इंटरनेट में बैठे जाना दिस इज नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट एंड नॉट अर्जेंट सो ट्रू लीडर वर्क इन दिस क्वार ऑफ क्वालिटी एंड पर्सनल लीडरशिप इज फोकस विच इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड नॉट अर्जेंट दो इट इज नॉट अर्जेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर दिस वेबिनार आई शुड है आज सुबह में बैठ के बनाऊ because something goes wrong moment wise so you have to be always prepared do not urgent next month ka kaam ka shuruaat abhi karna chahiye because i know that is very important i have to meet my top management let's say example i have to make agendas i will not work a day before i know how much time it takes i have to be well in advance it's like called as anticipatory driving every day accident accident occurs iska matlab hum gaadi nikalte nahi hai when we are driving we should be careful that gaadi idhar se bhi aa sakti hai idhar se bhi aa sakta hai takraega to kya hoga let's say that plan b but you are very careful in your driving so you should be focused so this is the zone which we should be more working on quadrant of quality and personal leadership that is take up the important task do not interrupt still okay important and still urgent sometimes you are necessity boss ne bol diya ye likhe dena hai do it no problem that is not a major thing but avoid these things not important but urgent try to avoid not important not urgent don't do it at all so the balance of life is going to be physical as i told you in the beginning slide keep yourself healthy be more social and energy empathetic to fellow beings be more spiritual mentally strong so that the fire within you always gets ignited and it is always lively so this is the balance of life physical social mental and spiritual a true professional and a true leader always try to they don't compromise in any of these things these four quadrants are very very important they don't compromise it so the building endowments are all nurture self awareness by keeping a personal journal this is journal means what are the things that you have to do what is that which have worked good for you what is that which have worked it's like maintaining a personal diary educate the conscience by learning listening and responding to learn more listen and try to respond don't react jo spurt mein gusse mein jo karte hain usko reaction bolte hain सोच समझ के जो काम करते हैं उसको रिस्पॉन्स बोलते हैं सो वी हैव टू बी केयरफुल इन रिस्पॉन्डिंग नर्चर इंडिपेंडेंट विल बाय मेकिंग एंड कीपिंग प्रॉमिसेस व्हेन यू आर व्हेन यू आर गिवन योर प्रॉमिस ट्राई टू बी फॉर दैट डोंट ट्राई टू शन अवे फ्रॉम दैट डेवलप क्रिएटिव इमेजिनेशन थ्रू विजुअलाइजेशन आई वांट टू स्पेंड अ मिनट ओवर हियर विजुअलाइजेशन व्हिच इज वन वन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग व्हेन यू वांट टू बिकम अ बिग टीचर इफ एनी स्टूडेंट आर लिसनिंग ओवर हियर इमेजिन विजुअलाइज एवरीडे नाइट बिफोर यू गो टू स्लीप imagine yourself as a teacher teaching to 50 students 100 students when you want to become a very big clinician with a huge hospital setup try to every day visualize that aap imagination karna jo aankhe band karke you try to live in that moment what you want to become in future and guarantee if you are visualizing it strongly and when you are working for it correctly guarantee that you will achieve one or the other day you will, whatever you visualize today and if you have taken the right direction of working towards that the person who don't visualize but working for it the person who works and visualize will achieve that faster because you are giving more inputs to your brain and your act so that that will happen one day is because you are the creator of your own thoughts and you are the creator for your own activities and you are the creator for your own results so you have that power to do it that's you have to understand that you have given you have been given all those i you know powers to decide your future which is in your hands so visualize that correctly but again always ask yourself by visualizing this and achieving this which is going to affect others please don't visualize if it is going to benefit for the better community things better visualize it and do it so these are the basic things which is very very essential to be a good professional and to be a good leader as i told you precursor professional as a person who is a professional doing professionalism is a precursor to be a good leader and uh, i wish that let's all accomplish each task in a professional way and promote leadership in our act so i wish each one of us to be a professional and the today's listeners are tomorrow's leaders and i wish and i wish everyone to be great leaders in the field of physiotherapy great educators researcher and a good clinician for our patient community god bless everyone thanks each one of you for being with us patiently and listening to my talk and i hope that i have justified whatever that i can do within this limited time to serve uh, all of you over here you can always ask me mail me the address is given over here hariharapi@charutrahealth.org saiheri76@gmail.com and my number is here which is having the whatsapp and you can contact himanshu for any further anything you want related to this topic i'll be more than happy to serve thank you himanshu over to you thank you all the audience i guess i have done on time
Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much, sir, for your uh, such a kind words. And it is a much needed topic uh, because these are the essential skills, and very few uh, teachers, I would say, they are uh, making us learn the things which are essentially needed in our activities of daily living. Uh, maybe related to the physiotherapy, but it is related to the profession. Whatever we are doing, any anything. So the professionalism. Few things we may follow. Few more things we will try to follow. I have learned a lot of uh, from today's session. Personally, I'll keep in the mind few more things which has to be remembered. And we are really grateful to you, sir. As it is a team effort, so our team physio and calculator is working very well. So we can manage the things and we can have the uh, support from the people like you. Uh, you uh, continuously supporting us and blessing us. So we are really Always. very grateful to you, sir. And we are blessed to have uh, very senior uh, resource person, senior faculty members who are uh, regularly in uh, our support. They are regularly appreciating us. So we are really grateful to each and everyone who is continuously joining us. And it is the aura of your session that we have maintained 97% attendance throughout the session. Oh, thank <laughs> so you. it is a great Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm, I'm very glad and happy. So it is, I, I was actually uh, continuously uh, seeing, uh, I would try to make the session live. I, it was live on the Facebook also. So, so oh, 